we're going to be doing uh, vision and perception. So now we're in chapter 16, and we're going to be on page number 202. Very, very short chapter, but uh, very important in regards to the material that we have to understand about vision and perception. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to discuss chapter 16, um, but I'm going to hit all the key points here. So again, go over you know the terms here. But I'm going to focus on the way that we have changes in the way we perceive an object in in dark light and bright light. <laughs> so most radiographers uh, and radiology people, we, we view things in dark lit areas. In fact, for the longest time, um, when I got into x-ray, my eyes had to adjust to the dark light. But now I actually have really great vision in, at night where I can, I can see things better at night compared to, to other people in my family. And, and I think because my eyes had to adjust over time, working in a dark room, working in a dark area, doing x-rays. Um, but again, you know, uh, I think it's just, you know, your, your, your eyes adjust to it. So one of the terms that we have to understand is what's called scotopic and photopic vision. So two of the terms we have to know. So photopic vision and scotopic vision. So photopic, what, what does photo mean? Photo means light, correct? So you have vision that uses what's called cones, all right? So we have what's called cones and rods in our eyes. So cones are being used for photopic vision, and this is for, for bright lighted areas, okay? So bright lights, this is daytime, all right? So bright lighted areas, daytime, so what we use is called the photopic vision. And photopic, you know, we have cones. And scotopic, scotopic vision is going to be using rods. And we use it for dim light, right? Dim lighted areas, uh, like nighttime, okay? So dark areas. So it uses rods. So photopic, I think about bright light. I think about bright orange cone. That's what helps me remember this. So bright orange cones. You guys ever seen the movie The Wedding Singer? Where he was like, they're cones, right? So I always think about cones being used for photopic vision. They're bright orange cones. For scotopic vision, I think about like a night scope, right? That's how, how I remember this. I'm just showing you how I remember it. So scotopic vision uses rods. So on page 204, it shows you guys the rods and the cones. All right, so we used to have to know the anatomy of the entire eye. All right, so not as much now, but we have to know uh, the fovea centralis. We have to know rods and cones, and we have to know the, uh, I think, fovea centralis, rods and cones. I think that's the, pretty much the extent of it now. But your fovea centralis, if you take a look here, you guys, is in the middle, right? And then here you have the pupil, you have the iris and the cornea, right? When you have cloudiness of the lens of the eye, that's known as cataracts, but that's something else. But if you take a look at these, these terms here, right, you actually, your perception of an object can change at certain distances. So most radiologists, believe it or not, um, they read, they, they don't get too close to the, to, the, to the thing, right? They have to be at least nine inches away from the from the uh, the screen uh, you can find this I don't know what what it is in the book here uh, oh viewing distance on page 206 but you'll see you guys on page 206 that most of the distances that are read there's a, there's a threshold and we start to have these different effects we have the mock effect boundary effect and then if you get too close less than nine inches your your forveus and Charles creates a blind spot we actually lose lose things. So believe it or not, they kind of they kind of look back a little bit. They don't get too close to the monitor. They stay away at least nine inches away. And that's because your eye creates a blind spot around you know certain objects. So again, there's there's a threshold for a viewing distance. Have you guys noticed that when you look at I don't want to say shows because we're just talking about how inaccurate shows are. But most places, when, they're, when you go into a doctor's area where they're reading the images, they're always dark, correct? They're always dark lit. And the reason for that, you guys, I, I'm going to do it right now. I'm going to show you guys what's going to happen here. Look at this white screen. You see the white screen? Now look here. Look on the, on the sides here. 
your eyes are actually distracted from the from the from the white around the white screen. So watch what's going to happen. I'm going to come over here and I'll turn off the lights. <clears throat> so now that I turn off the lights on the edges, this part here, you guys, this part here, right, is actually going to be brighter because now you're focused on this area that's in front. So what we've done is we removed veil glare. So veil glare is a distraction. It, it, it distracts our perception of objects. It, it diminishes visual acuity. So again, when you have surrounding bright light around the monitor, it creates what's called veil glare. So veil glare is a, is a distraction. It actually decreases visual acuity. So by turning off the surrounding lights, you're allowed to focus on the screen. That's why the doctors read in the dark, all right? So they're, they're looking at the image because it increases our depth perception of an object and it helps with our visual acuity. So there's another thing here where it talks about uh, boundary effect. And believe it or not, uh, boundary effect, uh, it has to do with shades of grays and our perception of objects. So again, when you have certain objects that are separated, like right now it's dark, right? And now the, the change is here, right? So when you have a change of brightness levels, it changes the boundaries of an object. It changes the structural edges of an object. And this is where you can have, you know, a loss of perception or an increase of perception by having this boundary effect, of course. All right, so uh, there's, there's not much more here in regards to to uh, the key terms I have to go over, I would suggest that you read, you know, all of the terms. Um, but again, this is a very short chapter. But again, um, I wanted to hit on the key terms. So we went over photopic vision, photopic vision. We went over viewing distance. We talked about veil glare. And a little bit of the uh, boundary effect, right? But... You guys, I, I would go ahead and take note of this. Let's see what the key terms are here on chapter uh, 16. So we got cone cells. We got contrast perception, edge enhancement. That's a term that I'm going to describe in, in digital radiography. But edge enhancement is exactly what that term is. It enhances the, the structural edges of an object. So edge enhancement's in here. And it's, uh, let's see. I know I saw it here somewhere. Oh, Page 206, page 206, all right? So edge enhancement, it says here, for exposure differences is shown as a step wedge, right? It says here, uh, I don't have my glasses. It says the end result is a response is shown. This creates an effect known as edge enhancement. It compresses the entire grayscale while making the boundary appear more distinct. So it sharpens the edges of the object <laughs> by using color variations. All right, so that's what edge enhancement is. It enhances the edges of an object. All right, it makes one a little bit more darker, one a little bit less darker. All right, so that's going to be edge enhancement. But again, you guys, I would go ahead, make sure you do uh, the summary. I would go ahead and look at the art form and take a look at the poetry here, you guys, on page 210. All right, so again, you can see that x ray can also be used in forensic medicine. I know this is actually, you know, <laughs> kind of. A little side topic, but I have uh, an acquaintance of mine. I don't, I don't know if I call him friend, but uh, I worked with him, and he's well known in the field. Um, and he actually had a chance to do CT scanning on King Tut, and he did X-rays on mummies throughout the world. He was on the show where they were discovering mummies, but he was the radiographer that was in charge of doing X-rays and CTs on the image. So every time I see this, I, I just think about him. But take a look at the. Uh, the, the page on 210, and uh, let me know what you think. But always, always, you guys, do the reading, look at the key terms, watch these videos, look at the presentation. I was talking to somebody here in the front, and they were saying that they read the summary first, and then they go over the key terms, and then they do the reading. Then they watch the video, and then they go back to the reading. I know it sounds like a lot, you guys, but that's actually what we have to do. All right, so again, put the work into it, you guys, and I'm sure you'll have positive results. We'll see you guys in a little bit, and we're going to be doing uh, image production, okay? Take care. Bye-bye.